Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw a colourful Play logo in Adobe Illustrator. So the logo that you see on screen now is the previous Dansky logo and that's what we're going to create. So let's remove the dark background, move this over to the left and we're going to create our version in this space here. So selecting the polygon tool, left click on the artboard, specify three as the number of sides and click OK. Then with the main selection tool, just hold shift to scale up your triangle and again hold shift to rotate in set increments so it points to the right. And you can drag in from this right anchor point just to adjust the width. So we can make that a little bit narrower. Next, if we go to edit, down to copy, edit, paste in place, we can hold shift and alt to scale towards the center. And that will create a copy at the same time. And then we can give this the color white. And if we select the black triangle, we can round off our corners in a number of different ways. If you're using CS6 or older, go up to effect, down to stylize, select round corners, specify your radius and click OK. You can then edit the radius or the round corners from the appearance panel as you like. If you're using Illustrator CC or newer, you can select the little dots inside the edge and just left click these to quickly and easily round off corners. So let's round these off. And again, we can make this bigger by holding Shift and Alt to scale up from the center. And with our white triangle, we can again do the same. So holding Shift, Alt, and scaling upwards. Now, ideally, we want the width around all three sides to be consistent. So let's just move this white triangle to the right a little bit. And we can zoom in just a little bit more. And let's make it a tiny bit bigger. So there we go. And we can drag over both of them and just bring these in a tiny bit as well, just to make it a little bit more narrow, similar to the existing logo on the left. So once you have something that you're happy with, what you can do is select the black shape and in the Pathfinder panel, just select the top left option, which is Unite. Now this will mean that you can't quickly and easily round off the corners anymore, however it does sometimes avoid complications further down the line. Okay, so we've effectively created a play symbol. What we're going to do next is zoom in and we're just going to create these curves here. So we're going to add these in. So with the pen tool selected and your smart guides turned on, you can go to view, just look for that little tick there. And you can left click on this anchor point here. You'll see it nicely snaps in place. And then left click over here on that left edge. And left click and drag and just drag out that curve and let go. Now it automatically wants to follow this up with another curve. However, if you hold down Alt and just left click on that anchor point, it will cut that for us. And if we go into outline view, that's Command or Control Y you'll see that we've created that curve absolutely fine. And what we can do is just remove the fill on that as well. So you can't see it here, but it's definitely there. And we can do the same again here. So select the pen tool and we can actually create this in outline view. So we're just going to create this next curve. Just left click. Let's undo that and try again. Just left click drag that out and let go hold alt and left click and it wants to carry on here but what you can do is go up to select deselect and that's definitely a shortcut worth learning and it just removes that selection okay so we're starting to get there next we're going to create this gap here so let's zoom into this bottom part and again with the pen tool we're just going to left click and draw this line out until it meets the edge and just click anywhere out here. It doesn't matter what kind of shape you create. Make sure that this line we're about to create now is parallel to this line here. So 
we don't want the width to be getting thicker or thinner as it goes in it needs to be consistent so just left click and then complete this shape back to the beginning so if we come out of outline view we can select this shape give it a white fill and it will blend into the background but give us a good idea of how it's going to look so you can see that I've made it a little bit thick there but what we can do is with the direct selection tool just hover over these points left click to select hold shift and select this other anchor point and then I can then use the arrow keys or my mouse to just nudge this down to adjust the width and now I can select the white triangle in the middle hold shift and select this new random white shape we've created and unite these in the Pathfinder palette so now these become one complete shape next what we're going to do is select both the black original shape we created and the white shape and now in the Pathfinder palette select subtract or minus front and what this will do is it will remove the white from the black so now if I layer color behind this shape it's no longer white in the middle it's actually transparent so there's nothing else there so we've essentially created the symbol now the logo in a single color this is now one complete shape with these additional lines here what we're going to do is drag over all of these now and select the live paint bucket tool this may be hidden under the shape builder tool so just select this tool and it doesn't matter which swatches we use at the moment just pick a swatch from your swatch palette and you'll see that it shows which segment we're going to color and we can just start to color up the different parts of our shape as I say it doesn't matter which colors you use at the moment but once you've done that just drag over everything and go to object expand leave everything selected and click OK and we can then select our shape double click to go inside it and individually select the different elements using the direct selection tool and something I like to do personally is to select these elements individually and go to edit cut just come out of my shape here from the top left and go edit paste in place sometimes shapes in Illustrator get grouped together and it's quite difficult without going into the group and then into the group again it's quite difficult to work with them so I like to go into the group use the direct selection tool to grab the shape that I want or the element that I want go to edit cut come back out the group and go to edit paste in place and then I know that it's just that element that I've brought back out and the blue one here on its own is fine so we've now got these three elements and we can start applying the gradients so with the red one on the left selected in fact before I do that let's just go through the different colors if you are following along and you'd like to use the exact same swatches what I'll do now is I'm just going to go through the different swatches so you can see the values that make up those colors and then you can use them if you'd like to use the same colors when following this tutorial if not feel free to skip the video at this point
So to create one of those swatches, just double click on the color picker and then the RGB values that were shown can be entered in these three spaces here. Okay, so let's select this red element here. Now when working with gradients in Illustrator, personally I find it easier to expand the panels out just so you can view the swatches and the gradient panel at the same time. So first of all, let's just start by dragging the purple swatch onto the gradient slider. And we've got a few already on there, so we can just left click and remove these. So now we want to add the dark red, so we'll drag this into the middle. We can type the location here of 50%, so it will put that dark red exactly in the middle. And then we've got the lighter red, and we can just drag this onto the green on the gradient slider, and it will replace that color. Now at the moment, the gradient runs from left to right. That's fine, but it's not quite what we want. So we can change the angle here, and we can change that to 90. And if you want to quickly reverse your gradient, you can select this button, and it will flip it the other way around. So whether it's left to right or top to bottom. So there we go, we've created one. Next, let's select the yellow. And we can just click the gradient slider and it will apply a gradient by default. So now what we can do is we can just drag our lighter red onto the purple at the top and we'll see that it will replace it. And we've got the orangey mustard yellow color. Let's drag that into the middle. And then the lighter yellow, we can drag this one onto the end. And lastly, we're going to select the blue. And we've got the very light green. So let's just drag off the swatch we don't want. Move that green swatch to the right. You can adjust these, by the way, as well. You can move the location around freely, or you can type in a specific location. And next we have this color. Kind of a slightly different shade of green, a bit more vibrant. Then we're moving into the turquoise. And we've actually got a few more colors within this last bar. So what we're going to do is bunch these up. And we'll bring this one to about here. So something like this. So we'll try and space these as consistently apart as we can. And we've got this dark one on the end here. And actually there may be another swatch. So let's just move these up a little bit more. Just one more. Let's see if we can squeeze that in. That looks a bit more like it. So again, we can type the exact value. So 25%. The blue one in the middle will be 50%. And then this one will be 75% if you want to be exact with everything. Now we can see here that the angle's a little bit different as well. So what we can do is we can type 10 as the angle and you'll see that it moves the gradient around a little bit. Let's just zoom in. Let's try a bit more, 20, press enter. And we can keep going until we get something that looks a bit more like the logo on the left. Let's try 45. Right, 50. I'm going to settle on 50, so there we go. And I think at the top here as well, it should be this lighter yellow. And I can always adjust the spacing a little bit more as well. And actually, if we bring these up a little bit, we just get that very, very light green on the end there. So the trick is we're trying to run the colors into each other. So let's just space those equally apart. There we go, that looks a bit more like it. In fact, I think this second version looks a bit better than the first. And then you can adjust those gradients as you need to to get the desired result. 
So we're finished with the original logo now. We can delete that. Now let's select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that covers the entire artboard and select the fill as the dark blue, the very, very, very dark blue. And go to object, arrange and center back. And then we can hold shift to select all of the different elements that make up the logo. Go to object, group, and then from the top of the screen, we can select this little option here, select align to artboard, and align this both horizontally and vertically within the artboard. And there we go, we've created a colorful play logo in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.